Hello and welcome to The Crafty View. I'm Diane Williams, the host for the show. And today we're here at the Craft Center. You should come by 950 Rice Road in Ridgeland. Come by sometime and see the wonderful things that are taking place here. Sometimes there are demonstrations that take place and Earl Brown is demonstrating his art and his craft. So let's take a look at what he's got going on. Okay, Earl Brown is out here today. He's with the Pearl River Woodcarvers Guild, and also he's a member of the Mississippi Craft Center. And he calls his, his the work that he does Five Roots Woodworking. This is how you could get in touch with him. But let's take time to meet the person that does the craft. And I haven't shown you the craft yet, but are you ready? Here we go. You know Christmas is coming up, and look, the, look at this. Look at the colors on this woodworking. He's a wood, I believe he's a wood carver, yes. But look at the eyes on the wise men and the angels. Oh, especially this one looking down. Take a look at that. Well, we're just in time to start thinking about Christmas. Hello, Earl Brown, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. So you're a wood carver? Yes, ma'am. How long have you been doing it? Uh, since 2003. What got you started? I got it started, um, my father bought uh, an auction at a storage bin and there were some woodworking tools in there and we had always worked with uh, building cabinets, things like that. Uh, but inside that bin was a tool that neither one of us knew what it was, and it turned out to be a scroll saw. And I made some things out of two, in 2D with that scroll saw. And over time, just wanted something a little more than the 2D, something, something more in the round, and found a, a new magazine that was starting, Wood Carving Magazine and subscribe to it and just self-taught myself from there. Wow. Just started with, with simple things and, and went on from that. And you're carving right now. Yes, what, tell me what a scroll saw is. Give me an idea what that looks like. A scroll saw um, has a bed on it. it. It works more like a sewing machine. Oh. It moves up and down and it has a little five inch blade on it where you can cut, lay wood on that bed and cut around, uh, cut your design out from there. Okay, it almost sounds like, you know, uh, some wood workers use, I think they call it a lathe. Yes, ma'am. Is is it similar to that in any way? Uh, it's, it works with wood. Uh, a lathe turns round to turn bowls and things that are round and symmetrical, but uh, a scroll saw will just take a flat piece of wood and you can cut designs okay. and, and cut it and, in different shapes. And cutting into it like a, it's a sewing machine. Yes. Did you know what it was when you found it that I first time? I did not. I had very limited uh, experience with woodworking at that time, so I did not know what it was. Were you excited? to? I was. It, uh, it was an, a new thing to try, a new hobby, and uh, it didn't take long before I wanted to do something more, more three-dimensional. They say that it can be spiritual sometimes when you touch the wood or when you touch or see some uh, an element uh, mm -hmm. that is used in creating a design, that it's very spiritual. You feel it inside and you, you want to get involved with it. Yes, ma'am. So then you had your tools and everything, and where did you go? How did you find out more? The first actual wood carving I did was for a retirement gift for a friend on the coast. Uh, he retired as a, a fireman after 30 years with Gulf Court Fire Department. And uh, I made a, a plaque for him uh, with the Maltese cross and a piece of cedar uh, with the uh, carving of their uh, station patch in the center. And I didn't have any any special tools then. I had uh, pretty much a box cutter, uh, an X-Acto knife, and a chainsaw file. And so, so these are some of your tools here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
I recognize those tools. Right, gouges, gouges, V tools, uh, knives. You can spend uh, a lot of money on tools, or you can you don't have to spend a lot to get started. Uh, most of what I do is done with a box cutter, a small box cutter. I love the boot. Mm -hmm. That's uh, one of my very first carvings after that that retirement gift. Really? Mm -hmm. Tell me about the wood that you use. Most of it is northern basswood from Wisconsin, Minnesota area. And you can use other kinds of wood. Uh, decoy carvers like to use tupelo, which is a black gum. Is it hard to find the types of woods that you like to use? Uh, this northern basswood has to be ordered. Uh, we have a southern basswood here, but it doesn't take the detail as, as well as a northern basswood. And so what do you find when you, as part of the Pearl River Wood Carvers Guild, how has that been a benefit to you? Oh, that's that's been great because there are uh, carvers that were there when I started who had been carving for 30, 40 years, and you get to uh, benefit from their knowledge. And uh, we do meet uh, the, first, the third Monday of every month at the Senior Center in Brandon. Okay. And everyone's welcome there. You don't have to have any experience. Uh, we can teach you how to carve. Oh, that's uh, really good. No charge at all. Uh, we can get you set up with tools, wood, whatever you need. Tell me about this piece I've been looking at. I this like is, this. Uh, called a study stick, and it just shows uh, the different stages of doing a carving from blocking out a nose. Uh, this is you got the brow and the eye sockets, and it just shows each step there. Oh, it's so wonderful that you have that, and then mm -hmm. you're telling people if they want to get involved and learn how they could come and see, take a look at these stages, and yes. get a feel for the instruments and everything. Mm -hmm. Look at the character there. That really has a lot of, who do I know that looks like that? <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> Very nice. Um, and then you, you do some intricate things, like this piece of wood has so much happening. Right. Talk about what made you create something like this. This was actually, uh, uh, I was thinking about a uh, old hunting friend of mine named Rusty Priest uh, from St. Francisville, Florida, or Louisiana. And he loved to take naps while he was sleeping. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, this is Rusty here. Tur he loved to turkey hunt more than anything. Well, and uh, that's uh, Rusty. He's falling asleep. At the, turkey's against getting the tree. away. Turkeys are walking around looking at him. The squirrels are looking at him. There's a raccoon up on top looking down on him. Yeah. Uh, I was over here on this other side uh -huh. looking at this uh, cowboy here with his rifle. Tell me, are all the elements in what I'm looking at carved from wood? Yes, ma'am. The it's cup, the pot, every, the gun? Everything in that piece is wood. Oh. And I notice you captured some of your images of people with them interacting like, like you're not there. Yes. It's, it's almost like they're doing their thing and you're just an observer. Yes. The head's down, he's drinking his mm -hmm. coffee. And Warming how... his hands over the fire. That's actually the piece I did when I first juried into the Craftsman's Guild in 2017. Oh, no wonder you got in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was good. Mm -hmm. I love, like, his hat and everything. Yes. How do you get it to be so smooth? A lot of sand. A lot of sand and sandpaper. You all hear that, see? Mm -hmm. you, people that carve or do certain things there's a lot that goes into it you might think you could pick up a knife and start whittling but uh that's just part of it sanding it sanding sanding until you get it just right yeah. and you can see the difference in that and then how do you paint it uh that's acrylic paints just craft paints 
Oh. Uh, it's best to water them down and build up the layers until it's the color you want where it doesn't get too dark. Uh -huh. uh, but all carving is, is just a few basic cuts. Uh, something as simple as, as this dog here. That's one of the first things I did when I started carving. Uh, but that has the same cuts as, as this piece does. It's just a little more time spent on detail. So uh, this one probably has a hundred hours in it. Wow. But everything then, uses the same basic cuts. Same basic cuts. Yes. And you even did Mickey. <laughs> oh, is that Minnie? I can't. That's Mickey. That's Mickey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and and tell me about this character. These three are are carvings done by other carvers. This okay. one was done by a gentleman named Floyd Radigan, mm -hmm. uh, North, I believe, Michigan. He was the wood carver of the year uh, a few years ago, and he's in the Caricature Carvers of America. Mm -hmm. This one is a, actually a golf ball carved by Sarah Baraclaw in Utah. And so you don't have to necessarily have wood. You can do the same cuts on other medium. Oh my gosh. And this piece is done by a gentleman. His first name is Miroslaw. He's in Poland. And he does these little, uh, he calls them no shells, which uh, means big nose. And I could even see some mm -hmm. eyes up. Well, I think I see yes. eyes up under there. The big nose, mm -hmm. big personality. And here's another cowboy. And mm -hmm. he's got a lariat in his hand. He's ready to rope something. Wow. And I think behind here, these are some pieces you're working on? Yes, ma'am. These are some, uh, are gonna be Christmas ornaments. Our club is doing, has a program uh, that we're doing. We're gonna do Christmas ornaments and donate them to the local hospice center uh, for patients and family to pick their own ornament uh, this Christmas. Mm, nice. and any leftovers will be going to some nursing homes. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's our club project this year. And then these are some more nativities that are starting. This is going to be the Mary. Uh, she just doesn't have her details yet. Okay. But everything starts out with a block. Uh, this one is actually from a little rooster, caricature rooster. Uh, but you just take your block of wood, draw a front profile, a side profile. Uh, you can cut it off with a knife or a bandsaw. I like to use a bandsaw. It saves time. And you start off with something more square, round it off a little bit. And then you take your tools and just start doing details until you come out with a, mm -hmm. a smaller figure like that. I see the donkey. I see the cow or the steer mm -hmm. there um, and the sheep. Have you ever done horses? I have not done a horse yet. They seem like they, they would be harder to do. Mm -hmm. But have you ever participated in the Chimneyville Craft Show? I have not been in Chimneyville yet. Okay. Are you thinking about it this year? Uh, probably not this year, uh, maybe soon in the future. Yeah, the reason why I ask, because it takes so much, as you could well imagine, to pre prepare to have as much merchandise as you would need to be in that show. Right. This is a three-day show. Mm -hmm. Yes. You must have children. Do you have children? They are grown children. Oh. They're in their 20s. But well, what inspired you to do this? Uh, this is a, from a comic strip, Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. And I was always so busy doing something, that, an order that someone wanted me to do for them. Uh, I retired from University Medical Center in 2019. And this is the first piece I did after I retired that was just for fun. Were you a doctor, a nurse, or? I was a draftsman there. In physical plant. Oh, okay. And you could turn, you know, you could, in your lifetime, there are seasons in one's life that you can transition. And something like this during a pandemic is really, uh, it's calming, it's encouraging, it gives you, it gives you hope, guys. Mm -hmm. It gives you hope. It gives you something to focus on so you're not thinking about either being alone or away from people. During it, the pandemic. It is a good way to de-stress. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the, most of these were done sitting in the recliner uh, at night with an apron in my lap. Yeah. 
I like how you've hung these. Mm -hmm. You find this. Do you have a hard time finding this type of hanger? Uh, no, ma'am. I ordered those on Amazon. Uh, they're, they're just called ornament hangers. Okay. And you can find them. They're different, different heights. Oh, and you even did this um... antler shed. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you carved the base as well. Yes, ma'am. You don't go buy your bases, you carve them. Right. Have you painted before, or do you just started adding the paints when you started carving? Uh, I pretty much just started painting when I carved. Oh. I carve. Very good. I would do little hand sketches in high school and all with pencil or pen, but uh, the painting started with the, with the carving. Mm-hmm. You have some pictures there. Are those pictures for you to look at yes, as you're considering? This one's a, a reference for a turkey. Okay. I'm doing the uh, topper for a walking staff now for Gentleman and Morton. Oh, so he does commissions too, yes. you guys. And then you have you have pocket knives. That's not really a pocket knife. This is just a, a little box cutter. This is what I use for most of my most of my work. Uh, the blades are cheap. You don't have to resharpen them. Okay. Uh, you can stick it in your pocket, fold it and stick it in your pocket and carry it anywhere. Mm -hmm. And just carve it everywhere you're at. Well, I think this has been wonderful. I love seeing your work. And even you're using these knives that have wood bases mm -hmm. to them. Somebody might have carved those as well. They did. A gentleman named uh, uh, Rich makes those up in uh, up north. It's uh, Helvey is the name of the knife company. Oh, really nice. I like when we support one another. You have some, when we looked at some pieces that someone else has done, mm -hmm. and um, I like when we support and share the work of others as well, because it expands our experiences and appreciation. Well, I think this right here is my favorite piece. Does it have a name? Do you call it something? Uh, I don't think I named that one. Oh, look at his spurs. Mm -hmm. Spurs and spurs. chaps. And so, there's the back of some of the designs. If someone wanted to get in touch with you, I see your card here. You're located in Brandon. There's his phone number and his uh, Gmail account. Are you on social media at all? Uh, no, just my personal page, Earl Brown. In okay. Brandon or you can contact Earl Brown through the Craft Center here in Ridgeland. I've enjoyed looking at your work and thank you so much. Yes ma'am, thank you.